Go. Gentlemen, welcome to the special Father's Day edition of the PopGo Project Podcast. How are you? Good, how are you? We're good. Doing yeah. well, PopGo. How are you? Uh, surviving the smoke out of 2023. How are you guys doing? Same way. <laughs> Same. Same, man. It's like uh, I woke up this morning and I was heading to work and I and I asked myself, am I living on Earth or did I somehow transport to Mars? I'm not really sure. It, it was crazy. It was actually getting old on Facebook and social media because you know we've been dealing with the smoke for what three days now. But uh, it's actually uh, June eighth. Um, we're recording this prior to Father's Day, but uh, yeah, so we're we're dealing with the smoke. I think it's better today than it was yesterday. Yesterday was pretty bad. Yeah, much better today. Yeah, for sure. I agree. It's hard to go outside. I went. I went outside. I was like, wow, I can't breathe. It def it definitely felt like you were sitting around a campfire for a few days if you were out there long enough i mean you know like you're sitting around a fire you you yeah. get that smell of just like burnt wood you know from, from being out there for a while it it was kind of like that uh, yeah. if you were out there for more than five ten minutes you're like man i felt like i just left a campfire for and i was there for a couple hours that's how my clothes smelled when i walked in my house like yeah. i had been in a campfire and actually i had to jump in on the the whole social media nonsense and i actually put um I don't know if you guys ever saw the meme where it says um, um, my special talent and it's like three images of somebody around a campfire and the, the first image is them, um, the smoke from the campfire blowing in their face and then the guy moves and the fo the smoke follows him oh, and he moves again and the, the smoke follows him again. So I use that as yeah. the uh, my my way of joining the sheep posting on social media. Like that. I, tried, I tried to use it to get you know more business at the rink because I said you know don't let your kids be playing outside come and come skate and smoke free in here. <laughs> yeah. It's well, Butch, yeah, yeah, Butch. I mean, like you know, we you're a little older than me, I think. Um, I mean, we spent uh, a lot of our uh, early twenties uh, in smoky clubs. Yes. We're born for this. We're ready. Massive nice smoky club. <laughs> oh, and then you go home and jump in bed and and oh, they wake up in the morning like. I used to shoot darts on Monday nights with the guys and we would do a traveling dart league and it was all at like VFWs and those old guys love to smoke. This is years ago. Um, they loved smoke and I would get home and I would have to shower, close off shower before I got into bed because my wife couldn't handle it. Yeah. But, yeah. VFW still go hard like that. I mean, even, even performing out, um, I did the VFW last year and we didn't do it outside the one that's in Scranton. And uh, we had to do it inside. And I was like stuck under this old school, like makeshift where the TV sits on it. And then there's like the little slots over here. And it's just straight up like the ventilation system hasn't probably been working in years since their kitchen hasn't been working. So <laughs> you just got to kind of roll with it. Um, but yeah, I mean, VFW still go hard. Yeah. Hard like that. A lot of respect, though. Respect. Yeah. A hundred percent. Well, I wanted to do this. Um, I've been kicking around this idea of doing a, a Father's Day edition of the podcast. Um, as you guys know, I think the podcast is um, focused on entertainment and and music and things like that. And obviously, Adam, you kind of uh, checked that box. You're you're involved with the uh, the MDG crew. And I do want yep. to take a moment, real quick. Um, you know, just a few months ago, we lost a member of the MDG crew, uh, Bob Foley, um, who was. A friend uh, and a great father and a great husband and um, oh, wow. I, you know it's it's uh, it's a sad moment and uh, the world experienced uh, a huge loss and especially his, his family so yeah um, shout out Bob Foley yeah hundred percent that's awesome Bobco yeah definitely lost a great guy uh, will always be um, a huge part of who we are what we became. Um, and definitely left his uh, footprint in this area for sure. So, um, you know, definitely a tougher Father's Day without him here, uh, but he's definitely here in spirit. So, for sure, for sure. And uh, Bushy Feist, I'm not sure if you were ever a musician. Uh, I've just known you as a, a integral part of crowds at shows yes. over the uh, years. Always, yeah. My, I mean, my whole family does. My bro both brothers are drummers, and yep brother-in-law you know so i was always in the scene i just never i never 
could put the time in to, to doing it to, you know to, to i could play i could play a little guitar a little bass i you know I, but i just i never could put the time in i was more concerned about the party and st- part of it same same yeah. we're, we're like best friends with who never really hung out that much <laughs> and it was but, fun um, it was some fun yeah. time so bad for the the younger generation today these kids going out because they don't have what we got to experience it's funny too uh butch how old are you 47 47 so you are you're seven years older than me so oh, like, i feel like i'm 22 there you go you are, you, you look that's that's, you that's look all great. that matters yep. and you look great you don't look 47 at all um but yeah so you even had you experienced far more in seven years uh than i did you know i and then uh, adam i think you're a few years younger than me I'm, I'll be, yeah, I'll be turning 39. So we're right around the oh, same. Okay. So yeah, we're about the same. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it's amazing how like those generations, like those four year gaps or five year gaps, like they change so much. Like, like Butch, you saw so much more than I did. And then Adam and I were kind of in the, in the same, same time. But, like even my wife, who's four years younger than me, she, she missed the Murray days in Wilkesbury. Like, yeah. And it just keeps falling off. And I think yeah. the kids these days, they just like, they don't party like we used to. You know, they just, they're, they're more, they're more health conscious. Yeah. Or they do it different. I don't know. It's, it's, it's definitely in different. The, even the even scene has definitely changed I for sure. The, I look at the, the younger kids, like even at 17 and 18 now with, you know, being around them a lot and they're not, I feel like they, they don't get into trouble. Like we used to back in the day. They don't do that. They're not getting into that kind of trouble. Well, I think that, I mean, I wonder if that's part of, uh, you know the upbringing that you know we've provided them um and let's get into that i mean we're here to talk about the most important thing in our lives and that's being being fathers and uh, adam you have uh a little boy who's turning six and a little girl turn, turning nine yep and but you have two kids 17 and 19 are they both girls or daughter 19 son 17 okay so boy and girl and i have a boy and girl too so this is perfect so we're all at different stages too which is which is cool that's why i wanted to kind of get these differences of, of opinions here um i think i mean i don't know butch i mean like i'm sure you've like kind of raised your children to you know don't do what i did yes oh, definitely and and you know especially having a daughter first what, what order are yours in i have a boy who is five and my little girl will be turning she'll be 11 months when this airs so you're good you got a boy to, to protect I'm hoping because I can't do it. I'm I'm, I'm too far out of shape to help. <laughs> so, Same with me, man. So I did it. You know, I wanted to make sure my daughter, because not that she had to protect my son, but I raised her to try to be strong and and you know not take shit from anybody. You know, like because especially being a female, you have to be like that. And and you might think this is funny, but I had this. I I wouldn't I would not let her have a boyfriend until she was 16. Like it wasn't even in the it wasn't even in the cards at all like it would it would not have because i you know i knew how it was when we were younger and yeah you know not that i was trying to save her heartbreak or anything or, or stop her from doing anything but i just knew especially now you know working running skateway and seeing what all these young kids are doing you'd be surprised what a lot of these parents are okay with letting their kids at 12 years old go sleep over pe- other people's houses and things like that the other opposite sex i'm like the parents are just so lax today. They just, a lot of parents just let their kids just run free. And like, I wasn't letting that shit happen. I'm sorry. I'm not, she was mad at me a lot, but I'm like, I'm, but now she thanks me for it. Right. But is there like a, is there like a strategy that you have in place for your 16 year old? Like, did you like challenge, like when she first came to you and was like, Hey, you know, I, I got a boyfriend or whatever the case oh. may be. Do you put, do you put a challenge in place? Like for me, I'm not going to be like challenging anybody to a fight because I can't do that, but I could challenge them to like a dance off or like a singing contest <laughs> about the extent of what I can do. So like, what's your strategy at that age? I, they usually, they just see me and they're scared, but, but I, my daughter, actually, this is not a joke. She did. Uh, uh, what is it called? They, um, what are, what are they called? Uh, not a spreadsheet, but like a PowerPoint presentation. Yes asking me if she could have a boyfriend at 16 like she came to me and she said dad i really want to date this kid actually pretty awesome yeah and she was like I, you know this is the reasons why i think he's good because i gave her i gave her this red flag list and i was like listen this is going to save you a lot of time and energy if you if any of these things they they're doing or or they're acting like this or they how do they treat their siblings how do they treat their parents do they talk back how do they do all these things and if they're any of them are negative 
walk away because it'll save you a lot of headache in the future. And of course, she didn't listen. She didn't listen. You know, she she went against it a little bit here and there at, at 17 and 18. But for the most part, now she's going to King's College, still doesn't have a boyfriend. And, she, and she's very career like goal oriented. She, you know, she's uh, just finished her, her fresh her freshman year at King's. She's got her first apartment and uh, working full time for um, uh, Lackawanna Dermatology. She, she was a PA student. She just she just switched her major. But like I, I made sure that my kids knew disappointment because so many parents, they never let their kids fall and they never hear the word right. no. And they never hear that the world's the shitty place. It is, whether we think it or not, there's a lot of bad shit going on. So if you, if your kids never have disappointment or never have, they're never hurt, feelings are never hurt. How are they going to handle it when they are 18 and someone, someone, you know, treats them like shit at their first job, what are they going to do? So you have to prepare them for that stuff. Right. That's, that's pretty uh, intense. Uh, and I like it. I'm glad we're doing this. Cause I, I, I take these notes i do i do as well i love it because that's kind of how we how i was raised and popco i'm sure you can probably relate to that like the the way that we were growing up and the way that my parents raised myself and my brother and i that's kind of the way that we were right like that's the way you were brought up today i'm sure it's probably different because the way that i raise my kids is very similar like we're just not going to give you hand me outs like you got to work towards what you're trying to do and go at it yourself, right? Versus, you know, how maybe other people are raising their kids today. So a lot of what I've learned as a parent, even now, is kind of what I've taken as being raised kind of in that same way as well, which has helped me become the person that I am today. And now I'm trying to make my kids become that as well, do things for themselves, learn how to do things for themselves, be confident in what they do, um, and go out and take what they want, but doing it the right way. Yeah, uh, Butch, uh, how, at what age did you start becoming kind of like hard on your kids? Because like, you know, they're at, at a certain age, they're, they're they're still innocent. They're still like, you know, just kind of growing. And I, I tend to think that I'm a little harder on my son than I need to be only because of what you just said. Like the world's a shitty place. I want him to be able to, you know, take care of himself and, and be independent. But also when I, when I do that sometimes, it's kind of almost like unrealistic expectations because he is only five years old. And my mom, my wife kind of keeps me in check to a degree. Like, Hey, he still is only five years old. Like let's like chill out a little bit, but I mean, but then and, I, and I, I agree with her when, when she kind of puts me in check, it's like, okay, you're right. But I just, I, I'm so, I'm looking f- so far in the future sometimes because I'm so worried about the world we live in and, and kind of navigating that. Like, was there a certain age you kind of like, you know, it, I guess it was like a, a situational thing, you know, like it's what, what was the actual thing he was doing, you know, like it, it, it would, I guess that would, was what it would depend on, you know, um, you know, if he was beating on his sister or something like that, or <laughs> different things, you know, that, not that he would, but I'm just saying yeah. like, I guess it was more like dep- how I would be with him would depend on what the situation was. Okay. Um, but I was always, even that, like you, you ever see, let's say your kid falls and like skins his knee you don't want to make a big production out of it. And like, Oh, I see so many parents do that. And then like they make, so they're making, they're making this kid want reaction. They're making them want everybody to, you know, like, so if I see it's so much easier, especially, like I said, I I deal with broken bones every week at Skato. I deal with all these things. And like, I saw a great example about two months ago. um, A guy, uh, Mike Schlude, his name is, he's a, he's a, um, a physical therapist. Uh, his wife comes to my shop, his daughter fell and broke her arm and she laid on the ground and it was, you could see it, it was snapped. Most people would freak out, you know, like or, he comes in all super calm and his demeanor helped his daughter be nice and calm. He wrapped it up, picked her up, talked to her soft, good. Most people are like, oh my God, oh my God, they, they flip out and then it makes the right. child flip out. So it's like those situations where, you know, if you don't make a big deal out of it, they're not going to think it's a big deal, you know? So, so it is it is like situational, you, you know, depending, but there, there are ways, especially, like I said, with, with you, cause you, you're molding your child, your child becomes what you create. They really do. Yeah. And it's like, it's like, you know, they, they, especially as they get older, when you see like my daughter is me, like the, her, her personality, her, her drive or like she, 
my wife's always like, oh my God, she is your, she is exactly you is her personality. Like the way she, you know, and, and it's a good, it's good and bad, but, but they are sponges and they're watching everything you do and every reaction you have. And, and people don't realize that. I see so many people that like reward their kids for acting bad. They'll, they'll be like, oh, come on, I'll take you to the, I'll take you to McDonald's. I'll take you to the store after the kid just did something terrible. Like you can't do that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's tough. It is. It is. And, and you don't want to be, you don't want to be hard on your kids. You don't want to be, you know, you want to take care of them. There's so many of these helicopter parents out there that like, they never let them fall. They never let them have a bad day. They never let them. And I, and I, like I said, I see it so often, even with clients at the shop where they they'll bring their kids in and like, we had this one guy, this kid was smacking his father in the face, ripping his beard. Like, and I was cringing. I'm thinking like, you're, you're creating that. You're letting that child, that's a child. He, he doesn't know that you're, you're letting him beat and smack you in public. The, the, the poor father. And I'm like, he's not even reacting. I'm like, what are you, what are you thinking? Yeah. Oh man, it's, it's, it's so hard when you see other people doing it and you wanted to say, listen, you know, you really want to change your situation, change the way you're doing this. You're, it's all wrong. Yeah. It's, you know, you talk about a helicopter parent and things like that. You know, obviously we don't ever want to see our kids get hurt. And I think that's the, <clears throat> the double-edged sword, right? Like you don't want to see them hurt. So your, you know, your instinct is to like, kind of like, prevent them from doing whatever they're doing so they don't get hurt. Right. I, have a, I have a huge saying, like, um, I feel like I'm saying this is why blah, blah, blah all the time. Like, cause if, 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 you know, I tell my son not, not to do something, it's because it's for his, his benefit. And then when the bad thing happens, I said, this is why we don't do this. <laughs> this is why yeah. we do this. And um, yeah, I just think it's, it's, you know, you're, we're constantly trying to do the right thing. And um, so they don't get hurt. And so they don't, you know, Right. Yeah, but it's it's hard. It's hard. It's a hard I thing to do when you feel, also want to let them fall. Not just not just like physically hurt. I mean, I mean their feet. They're like their feelings too. Like yeah, of course. Of have, course. Have you guys experienced any any school bullying with your kids at all? Uh um, kids bullying. Yeah, them. we 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 had yeah we had an incident this past year, um, where there was well, actually I shouldn't say this past year last year. Not so much this past year, uh, but last year when my daughter was on the bus, there was this boy that was on the bus that was kind of picking on other kids on the bus, calling people names, flicking people on the bus. And to the point where the school bus driver had to, you know, say something a million times and then they had to eventually just report the kid. So it was getting to the point where, you know, the 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 parents were starting to complain. We were starting to figure out what was going on. And then eventually we found out like what the situation was. Um, it actually got to the point where they actually removed this kid off the bus because he was such a, <clears throat> he was such a problem. Um, so yeah, that, that's probably the extent of, you know, the, the name calling and some of those things that he was doing on the bus to the point where it was, other kids were like telling their parents and then then my daughter was kind of one of the the people that were was also getting bothered as well um and then they they pulled this kid off the bus you know that, that's one of the hardest things to go through when your kid yeah. talk about being bullied and like you go to the school you go you, you go you do all try to do all the right things and it doesn't happen for you the like it, does, it doesn't stop or you know and luckily for you they pulled them off the bus but same thing happened with my daughter that yeah what do is the kid would act up in the back of the bus they'd bring him in the front with all the kindergartners what's he gonna do there he's just gonna act, he's gonna tease them and yeah the same exactly issue, same issue and that's that's where it's tough where you gotta like you know and i always told my kids i'm sure you know you hear this all the time is i'll never be mad at you if you stick up for yourself and and, and don't ever hit somebody first but if someone puts their hands on you you can fight back. You can fight. And I'll never be mad at you. Fight back. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. I'm desperately trying to get my son to do like the like karate or self-defense just because I want him to be able to take care of himself. Uh, should anything ever happen because it's going to happen. Kids are mean. Um, the internet exists now, which is a whole different story. Um, you know, as far as bullying goes, especially it's just, it's just a tough world. And I, he, has, he wants nothing to do with it. I took him to some classes to see it. And he's like, Nah, not for me. I, I seem to like just do it, but uh, but yeah, it's that's a 
it's a tough experience, I guess. I mean, I, I, I personally haven't had it yet because my son just finished um, pre-K, so he's going to kindergarten next year. And then obviously my daughter is uh, 11 months old. So, I mean, she probably gets bullied by the cat um, more than anything else. <laughs> but Or maybe she bullies the cat. She's probably the bully in that scenario. But I've been fortunate. Yeah, hopefully because it, it does suck but you know like i said for you I, it might be a little different because you have the older boy and yeah. and don't don't worry he's only five he, he's not going to get interested in that stuff yet but maybe in a couple of years because i tried it too yeah. we, i tried it I, I did the same thing i'm like and and I'm, I, went, I took him and they were doing all, like like i wanted them to learn like like more of like a self-defense mm-hmm. but they these kata things and it was like like is he really gonna be able to fight doing all that? Like, I'm, I'm sitting there watching i'm like I don't know. I don't know if he's going to be able to actually learn how to protect himself with this. Uh, and then he lost interest real fast. Yeah. Yeah. Know. Yeah. We have, he, we haven't had any, you know, he hasn't really expressed any interest in that. Like we do the whole soccer thing. We do baseball right now. Um, you know, my daughter does dance. Um, she does art stuff. Um, I mean, when I was a kid, I tried karate because I wanted to be like Johnny Lawrence from sure. Cobra Kai. Of course. Like way before the Cobra Kai series, right? Obviously came everybody wanted to be Johnny Lawrence, even though Daniel LaRusso and Miyagi were kind of, you know, here. But uh that didn't work out. And I ended up getting into NSYNC and learning NSYNC dances and becoming a boy band member. Um, so my my battles were on the dance floor. I wasn't gonna fight you with my hands, but I'd fight you with my feet. So I didn't become Johnny Lawrence, but I became a dancer. So <laughs> I bet you get the girls that way though. Yeah. I mean, listen, and my little guy's like, he loves to dance now and he does his thing. And I always, I always joke around with him like, Hey man, listen, there comes a time where somebody wants to throw it out. Just don't throw it out just start windmilling and like spin it on your back, throw a piece of cardboard down, ask somebody to battle you to think you're crazy and just walk away. <laughs> it will never happen. So that's good. <laughs> That's another thing though with this whole with this whole crazy sporting, you know, my my sister that that well, back then we played sports seasonally. And we played it's, dude, it's so nuts. Go ahead. I, and I'll I'll chime That's in a, too, but it's nuts. It is. Go ahead. You, it, it's it's nuts. So I mean, I I talk to a lot of parents who have kids in sports. Obviously the internet exists. You can, you can watch it happen in front of your eyes on on a, on a screen, right? And it's just like like when I was a kid growing up, we had one big black bag. The coach would come in, dump it out. There was five helmets. You shared the helmets. There was you know three or four bats. You shared yeah. the bats. You used the bat that was too big or too small for you, just based on you know your size at the time. Okay. There may have been one kid who had their own bat, and you know, maybe he was his parents had a little more money, or maybe he was an only child, so it was just easier for them. But this dude, and it's it said seasonally, like you know. Baseball was spring, summer, and, you know, you played that, and when it was over, it was over. Then you did, you know, basketball in the fall or football in the fall and then basketball winter, whatever it was. But now it's travel league this and travel league that, and the kids are playing baseball all year round. Parents are dumping so much money into their kids to do all this, thinking they're going to be the next Alex Rodriguez. It's not going to happen. It's, it's, It's crazy. And, I always say it's our fault. We are the ones doing this. I coached from my, my daughter was four years old. I coached her in baseball from four till, till 12. And then my son took him after that. So I I coached her a lot of years in baseball and one, one, um, you know how to do the field day. The, well, you, is your son in, in, in baseball yet or anything? Yeah, he just finished uh, coach pitch his first year of coach pitch this year. How to do like the you know how they do the uh, the field day the first opening day they do a little parade. Yep. yep. So that yep. The mountaintop they do this parade and they all go back to the field, and then they had like a couple speakers and they had a speaker I don't know if it was Misericordia or Kings or Wilkes one of the one of those schools it was the baseball coach, and he walked up and he goes all right parents I'm going to tell you something right now listen close, none of your kids are going to the pros. I was yeah. like yes. Yes, that's awesome. And he goes, so don't, so don't think they are. Don't treat them like that. And don't treat the coaches like that. They're here to have fun. Let them be kids and have fun. You know, yeah. the chances of them going to the pros are slim to none. So let them ha- be kids. Let them have fun. This is supposed to be fun for them. These coaches are volunteering their time. Don't yell at the coaches. And it was the best speech I heard. And, and you know, that's what I see now. All these, like these parents, for what they're using to pay for the, these 
these uh, uh, sporting events, if they just saved that for their kids' colleges, they'd probably have, you know, their first two years paid off. Yeah. But the problem yeah, is so, and- you, you got to keep up with the Joneses and you can't like, if you're, if your kid's mm-hmm. involved, it's like, oh, uh, well, everyone has their own bat, dad or, or mom. Like, what about me? And it's like, you feel bad. And like, what do you say? Like, tough shit? Like, go find, I, I don't know what you say, but like, so where are the ones doing it? That's okay, though, because you could, you could, I mean, I, 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 I did that. I got them bats in their own house. Because even with, with me, like, with, I don't, I don't like the sanitary part of sharing helmets. Yeah. Um, right. Lights and things like that. But um, that's to one extent, just buying them their own bat. But, the travel stuff is like it's so it's so and they're gone they're they're in they're in jersey this weekend philly next weekend hotel rooms and hotel rooms, yeah. you know and i i understand but half the time the kids getting burned out and they don't want to do it anymore yeah right yeah it's not not especially it's, at those ages people lose interest you know what i mean you know do you kind of realize you know at that point like what do people really want to stick with something and my kind of my philosophy even with my kids is like my daughter was kind of feeling that with dance. She was like, well, she had a recital in the beginning and they have their last recital coming up. And she's like, I don't know if I want to do dance anymore. I'm like, listen, you made a commitment. You got to stick with it until it's done. And then after that, and you get through the second recital, if you want to stick with it, you can. And then, or you can, or you don't have to, it's up to you. And the same with baseball. Like my little guy loves baseball, but then like, he'll quickly turn his attention to something else. He's like, well, I want to do this, but I don't want to do that anymore. I'm like, gotta stick with it, brother. Like you made a commitment. Your team needs you. When the season's over, you can decide if you want to continue on or not do it. But Popko, you said something interesting. It's, and I think Butch kind of piggybacked off of this, but when we were kids, it was so different because I played at the Marvin Dutch gap and it was very similar like that in North Grand. Like coach would bring in the bag and there would be like, 10 helmets, seven bats, extra gloves, extra everything. So like maybe somebody didn't have something or their parents couldn't go out and they couldn't afford a, a you know, the, the, the newest Easton bat, you know, or the, the best Wilson glove that was out there at the time. So you would always have something to share going when I got my little guy involved in baseball last year, this is the second year now. If you've seen some of these teams and how they roll up, like you would literally think that you were in MLB, mm-hmm. like some of them with the gear, like the gloves, the shoes, everything. My guy's just rolling in like his helmet might be, he looks, it's like three size bigger than his head, you know, fits on there the right way. Uh, you know, try to get it in there to fit. He's, you know, he's got his bat and he's got his, his glove, but like nothing else like special, and he doesn't really care. I mean, he's out there to have fun, like we said, have a good time. Right. But like some of them are rolling in. Like it's like there was the one, there's one girl that's on the team. I don't even think she qualifies to play baseball anymore in their league because she's just she should be in like little league. She looked like the ice box from like little giants. Like she's like <laughs> super, super tall. I'm like, is that like the ice box from little giants? Like, I'm so confused here. This this girl's like six foot eleven, and my son's like this big. It's like literally like a little guy i'm like how is this even fair but it's uh it's so true just the the nature of the game of of the whole keeping up with the joneses i think that was like the best saying because like that's what people try to do I, I guess when you look at it like growing up even for myself like yeah we we had things like our my parents would get us stuff but like we didn't have everything we did the best we could and we had what we had but you know, now it's like, it's kind of, I feel like it's gotten worse. Like now it's like everyone's got all this fancy stuff coming to play a T-ball or whatever it may be. And you're like, holy moly, like, am I missing something here? Yeah. My son had a a helmet that he used. Like his, a friend of his was outgrew that helmet, gave it to my son. I did buy him a bat, but I went to buy a a bat bag. I'm like, these are so expensive. So I, I asked I asked uh, in a community page if someone was trying to get rid of a, a, a baseball bat bag. Um, someone kindly offered it up for free. I took it. My son played the entire season with some of the other kids' last name on the bag the whole the whole season. I was just like, I'm not doing this yet. I'm not doing this right now. He There's no way. Played against sports store. I, I don't know. Yeah, if I heard so about that. Great store. They have a little guy. I had that when my kids were young. It was up near uh, Legio. It was up near the Woodlands, and you could go there, and people would, I guess, 
sell or, or, or sell their, their used equipment to the store and they would turn around and, and sell it. So you go up there and get bags, you can get gloves, you can get anything, any sport too. So that was nice having that back then. I don't know what happened to it, but that's probably because everyone at new stuff. Yeah. Right. I mean, yeah, that sounds like a great store. It really does. Yeah. I don't think we had anything like that up, up by us. Now that I'm thinking, of, I mean, we had like, it's probably 10, 10, 12 years ago. We had that. Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, I feel like we got we got like we jumped right into like the current life, but I want to go back really quick um, and just kind of get your, you know, the the very beginnings of of fatherhood. I mean, uh, and Butch, I'll start with you. Um, you know, what were your initial thoughts and emotions when you found out that you were going to be a dad for the first time? Um, uh, well, we I couldn't wait to be a dad. I, I I'm the oldest of six kids, and and we have a big family, a good family. And I just, I could not wait to be a father. Like we, we um, got married and instantly, you know, wanted to get pregnant. My wife to get pregnant. So I loved it. I loved every minute of it. Um, you know, I, there's nothing like it. You, you think, you know, love, you think, you know, there's, you don't know love until you have a child. You think you love your dog. You think you love your girlfriend. You think you love, you don't know it until you see that baby looking up at you. That's the truth. I wish I would have done it earlier. Yeah. I was, I was 35 when we had our, our son and um, there's the different reasons for why we waited long. My wife was in school forever because she's just really smart and wanted to do well and succeed and all that kind of poor shit. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so yeah, we waited and I just remember like when it happened, I was like, I wish I did this earlier. And then I waited, I didn't wait. There was some things that happened that, you know, why this is a big gap between my son and my daughter, but now I'm the old father, but uh, yeah, I wish I did it sooner. Cause like you said, yeah, I mean, there's nothing like it. No, nothing else matters. And no one else will understand that unless they are a parent. Yeah. hundred percent. That's why it's so hard to see, you know, parents that just aren't there for their kids. You know, I, I'm their fathers. I mean, like, I don't understand. I'll never understand that. I'll never understand how you could look at that kid and just not be there not be there for them or walk out i, I couldn't i couldn't ever imagine that i mean i would imagine um you know you said that you you came from a good family so it was probably easy for you to you you, you were raised the right way so like that that thought would never even cross your mind right but like you know i'm i, I get caught today even not today today but like current life um you know, seeing uh, adults that are like losers or just rude individuals. And like, I think about them and I'm like, how did you get this way? How did this happen? And I think it's like this, this person probably had a shit life. Like maybe their dad left or their mom was not around or whatever it might be, but like something happened. And it's, it's like, I can't imagine, like you said, like, you know, walking out on them and, or, or, or whatever it might be that led them to this moment in their life where they're, you know, at Turkey Hill on the phone, you know, trying to check out with the person at the register and just being a total dick bag um, to the person working because they're too busy on the phone being whatever. It's just, it's, it's weird. It is. Well, and a lot of that is back to parenting. You know, if, if you could have two good parents and you could just be on the internet getting in this wormhole and think, you know, like some people just, just go crazy with, with, with being indoctrinated by what they see out there. But um, a lot of times it is just bad parents. It's just, if you have bad parents, like, like I said, you said, I was lucky enough to have really good parents. And even that, like not trying to change the subject, but my parents were great with watching my kids for us, you know, cause that's another whole nother uh, obstacle is do we do daycare? Do we, how do we manage this if we're both working? Cause now both parents have usually have to work. Yeah. Some are have to have one stay home, but like, that's another scary thought too, is like, I don't trust someone else watching my kid at a daycare and you see all these horror stories. So, you know, we were lucky enough to, my parents were great and they, they would watch our kids. We went to work. Right. And they say it takes a village, right? And that's, that's uh, definitely true. Mm -hmm. um, we're talking about daycare. Uh, my, my son is in daycare. He just finished well daycare. Then he just finished, uh, you know, preschool and he's going to kindergarten next year. Um, it hit, and I had a, we had a great experience with with daycare. But you're right, there are some out there, and I've seen. Uh, I know people who have had 
um, situation where it was it was bad. Yeah, yeah that's it goes back to the world being a scary place too. It's messed it, it, up. It, is. it really, really is. And you can't always be you, know, you can't always be there to protect them. So you gotta try to put it in their mind on you know in situations because I always try to tell my daughter too, like you don't realize one situation can change the the whole course of your life. One bad mistake, one one getting in the car with the wrong person. So I always try to make her think of those things, like weigh it out before you make that decision. Really, really think about it because you know one bad move and and because you know we've all I know I don't know about you guys, but I I look back and I'm like holy shit, there's some I'm lucky to be here. I'm, yeah. I'm there's sometimes some things that I did and I'm like man, what the hell was I thinking? You know, but we're lucky enough to get through it. Yeah. I, I mean, there's times where my, my dad passed away uh, when I was early twenties and there are the things happened in my twenties that like, I was like, you know what? He was watching over me on that one <laughs> for sure. Yeah. But, um, and I always said too, like I would, my biggest fear about being a parent was like, I'm like, we can be the best parents in the world. We can, you know, talk about right from wrong and all that kind of shit. But like, they can meet one person, one wrong person, make the one bad choice and be shitty. <laughs> well, that's, yeah. that's true. It's true. But I think if I really, you know, nine times out of 10, when you see that, they're not coming from good parents. Right. Like I've seen a couple instances where like uh, uh, kids will hit a certain age and be like, I'm 18 now screw you. I'm gone. Like, I'll, you're not telling me what to do, you know? And, and I, 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 th- I feel like if you raise them right, they're not going to do that. If, if you raise them the right way and they, and they, you know, believe in you and, and, and like, even now, like my daughter, my daughter, she'll, she's like, she's, she's 19 and she still asks me before she does anything, like not before she does anything, but, but, you know, little things. So she'll say, dad, what do you think about this? So she'll come to me and ask my opinion before she makes the decision. And, That's you know, awesome. I kind of yeah. like, like that. Yeah. And I think that's, I think that's important, right? I think like still to this day, I mean, Popco, you and I are very similar. My mom passed away when I was in my, my twenties. Um, so, you know, even to this day, I, you know, I go to my dad for a lot of things, but I think that's the, even when my mom was alive, I used to go to her for things, even in my twenties. I mean, and I think it's that trust. I think as a parent that, you know, your parents have, made it easy for you to come and talk with them about no matter what it is right and never be afraid to come to talk with them no matter how old you are and i think just kind of speaks to you right butch on what you've done as a father to be able to have your your kids come to you and still want to talk to you and have a conversation where you kind of you see these things in the world or you hear these stories that like uh you know my my kids don't talk to me because they they can't they say they can't come and talk to me about this and that but i think i think it's the way that you communicate with them and and keep that open communication that it's okay for them to come and talk with you about things and i think that's important as a parent you know they feel like they can still trust you no matter what it is so yeah i think you said you know communication that's the that's the biggest thing Mm -hmm. i I think and you know and that's i always have an open line with my son and he's still young obviously but that's my goal is just to to be so open with him and like He'll never not know how much I love him. Like, and, yeah. And they, they need that. They need to feel that. Yeah. And it's always, yeah. like, I just always want him to know and my daughter to know that they can come to me and my or my wife with anything. And I think that's going to, you know, set them up for just, you know, great things and just being a good person. I mean, my, my, my dad and I, you know, he was a, a man of very few words. He, he was very much my father and it was, we didn't talk a lot and we, we didn't say I love you a lot. Um, my mom and I were different. She was more vocal and more, uh, you know, she talked to us more, but yeah, it was just, yeah, it's hard. Yeah. Sure. But, um, Adam, like, um, how has your perspective on life changed <laughs> since you became a father, especially now that you have a, a, a boy and a girl? Oh man. Um, I think I kind of agree with what we talked about before. I mean, becoming a parent, like it definitely changed who I am as a person for sure. Um, I remember it's funny because when I think back to, you know, after my wife and I got married, we we always wanted to have 
always wanted to have kids. We always talked about it, even um, when we first started dating. And then when it became a reality, um, I'll never forget this. I was down at Poor Richards blasting out some karaoke. Uh, <laughs> my buddies, my buddy had, was having a little get together. And I said to my wife, I'm like, hey, you mind if I go and just belt out some tunes at Poor Richards and hang out for a bit? And she's like, oh, yeah, go ahead. Go have a good time. And I came home and I guess it gave her enough time to to put on the on the room that wasn't finished yet. Still needed the drywall, the paint, the whole nine yards. Like she put a little note on there. So when I was going up the steps, I was feeling it coming back home, going up the steps and see the door. And it says, you know, it had the the pregnancy test. And then it says, you're going to be a dad. And I was like, is this, is this real life? I was like super pumped and excited. And I remember going through that whole scenario, the the minute when we went to the first appointment to, to for like the ultrasounds and like to find out, cause we ended up finding out what we were having. And they were like, they're like, it's a, it's a girl. And I'm like, Oh God. I'm like, first and foremost, I don't own any guns. I don't know how to fight. I said to my wife, I'm like, I think I'm gonna have to take like a karate class. Now I'm really gonna have to become Johnny Lawrence. Like that was a joke for, yeah. um, and then, you know, that whole experience, that whole experience of just becoming a dad, I think Butch, you said it like, seeing your 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 child when they first come out um is like god it was like the the craziest feeling in the world that i am now responsible for this little thing that has arrived on the planet and i got to make sure it's taken care of and fed and you know all this stuff there's a million things going through your head i think i was more nervous trying to swaddle my kid than i was worrying about all the things that come after because i'm like how the hell do you swaddle i'm like asking the lady I'm like can you come in and show me how to swaddle again <laughs> um but honestly my whole perspective on life really changed i mean having my daughter really made me become the person that i am today i mean she's wrapped around my finger to this day still um i mean I on on Thursdays I, I pop go you and I, I think you and I talked about this but I travel to my office in Philly on Thursdays so like when I leave super early in the morning I leave them notes every morning like every Thursday when I leave um and today she actually caught me because I forgot to leave a note but I still called her at 7 50 because I called them at 7 50 while I'm on the road um and she's like dad you forgot to leave a note this morning I'm like you're right I forgot to leave a note I'm like but I did call you at 7 50 so, I mean, she's wrapped around my finger. And then when we, when I had my, my little guy, I was kind of pumped about that. Cause I'm like, all right, great. Now I got the boy, let him kind of take care of, you know, the people that I can't take care of. He can protect his sister, you know, be there for, her. um, and you know, he's the man, like, I love him so much and he's just the coolest little dude in the world. And just the little conversations you have with your kids at this age is like pretty awesome. <laughs> um, like you'll be sitting, I'll be sitting in bed, like Haley and I, like we'll do like little beatboxing challenges, like in the, in, in, in bed. And then my little guy, he'll be, he'll be bringing out his transformers and we'll be doing battles in bed. And he's like, dad, this guy's got to win. You can't win, but this guy's got to win. So you gotta let me win. I'm like, all right, cool, dude. I'll let you win. It's cool. Like we'll do the thing. But it's like all these little things that you're doing now that you look at and it's like, and, and Butch, you can probably relate because your kids are older now. Like, you know, I try to like, I try to enjoy every single second, minute, hour, day as much as I can, because just the fact that my daughter's turning nine and my son is turning six really scares the crap out of me. I'm like, holy shit. Like, where did time go? First and foremost, how did we get here? Um, and I think the other thing too that always like kind of like is just crazy is like I kind of follow in sync with my daughter. So, you know, she's turning nine, I'm turning 39. When she's 10, I'm 40. When she's 11, I'm 41. That kind of freaks me out too. Um, Cause I'm like, there's like this invisible hourglass that I just see like the sand. And I'm like, I gotta like enjoy every second, every moment. But, um, it's absolutely changed my life, Popco. I mean, I, it's so hard to put, like, I could probably sit here all night and talk about every single thing that is amazing about being a dad. I think you, you know, you hear so many people say you, who don't have kids, like, I wonder, you know, God, what's that like? You know, we're kind of out doing all this stuff, doing all these things and, and whatever. But, and I've got some friends who are about to become parents for the first time. And I'm like, so like any advice, I'm like, it, it's the greatest thing ever. Like you'll see, like once you're in the mix of it, like it is the, it really is like, there's nothing better. 
So it's definitely completely changed my life um, drastically awesome. for the better. It's it's so awesome. Like you said, it does go fast. Then you blink your uh, eye. And, and that's why it's hard with the rat race of, of today with work and, and sports and all this stuff. It's easy to just like have blinders on and just go like this. You have to stop and like, be like, I got mm-hmm. to enjoy this, man. I have to watch them grow and watch them do this. You want to, you want to be there, you know, not just so many parents now are just buried in their phone and, and they're not, you know, they're not present for their kids and you, you have to do, and especially now it wasn't like that so much back in the day, but now, you know, it's, it's so easy to just say, here's your iPad and I'm on my phone, you know? And like, so it's hard, you know, I see parents, well, I'll tell you, like I said, you, you want to be there as much as you can. Cause I, man, I, I never thought I'd have a, a daughter. And I mean, not, I knew it would happen eventually, but I was in your, your, you guys, I was right where you were a couple, you know, not, not yeah. long ago. And now they're my both, they're both driving and wait, wait till you get to the car insurance. No, I'm not. I'm not ready for all that. Yeah, don't. <laughs> right? no, not, yeah, no yeah. thanks, Sam. By the time you guys are doing it, but forget it, man. You, you, it's stupid. Well, you you know, you guys mentioned like just being there and being present, and you know, I think our parents and I, I can't speak for yours, but I know like my parents worked, uh, both of them, and they worked nine to five or whatever, eight thirty to five, whatever it might have been. Um, and there's there's two things in this. They were at work all day. There were. But they're like they would come to games late. They would do this late, like. Um, but also, like there was never. Um, they they had you had your you had their attention, you know, when they got home because there weren't other distractions like there is today. Um, and what I'm trying to say is, um, it's so important to be present now. And like I'm so fortunate. I work at Axel Red Screen Printing. I just want to give them a shout out because. It provides me with so much flexibility, whether if, if I had to come in late because my daughter woke up at a weird time or I have to leave early because my son's got a game and I'm coaching his baseball team or I have to get him to where he needs to go. Like that's so important. And it's so it's so meaningful mm-hmm. for me to be be present and there for him. Because those are core memories too. Like they're gonna remember those moments for the rest of their life. And my dad did coach my basketball team one year. I'll never forget that. And I'll never forget my parents coming to my games and, you know, grandparents coming to games and shit like that. But like, I think it's just so important to like be there and Butch, I know you, you own your own businesses, which I think can probably be blessing and a curse at times because you're so involved with what you're doing and you, you know, you know, you own them. So you have to be there um, and you want to be there for your children too. So I'm sure you, you probably manage them very well. And, Adam, it sounds like you work from home except for Thursday. So it sounds like you have a good, good life, you know, work balance too. Yeah. You have a lot of flexibility. And I, I couldn't agree more with what you said, uh, Popko, about just having, you know, an employer that values you as a human being rather than just a worker for a company, right? Because there are a lot of companies out there that don't do things like that, give you the ability to have that flexibility to either work from home you know, kind of make your own schedule, do your thing. Um, and I, I'm very fortunate to have what I have. And, and same for my wife. Um, she has all the flexibility in the world. Um, she works for herself, right? So like, um, it it's nice to have that because it is important to be present. Um, and, and I think too, like, I think even when I'm at my son's baseball games or my daughter's dance recitals or um, the other day they had a they had field day. So I went to the field day um, for that. And just seeing their look on their face, they're like, my dad's here. Oh, look, it's my mom. It's my dad. Or maybe some other people, you know, they don't they don't have that. Right. Because I, I was in that situation, you know, when I was younger, where sometimes my dad couldn't make it somewhere or my mom couldn't make it. And I think you always counted on that, right? You're like, oh, you're like looking around for your parents and it's like that exciting feeling. Yeah. So just to see the look on their faces is like the greatest thing. Well, like even the kids had their their little um, like spring concert like a couple weeks ago and your your kids are on stage looking out in the crowd to see if, you know, you're out there. And I'm like, and he's like, that's my dad. That's my dad. And there's my mom, you know? So it's, it, I think that's, I think it's so important. And I think it's awesome to what you said and giving a shout out to your, to your employer, because um, I think we're all fortunate, um, you know, Butch doing your thing, me doing what I'm doing, you doing what you're doing, right. That we've all have that 
um, ability to, to be there and show up for the ones that are most important to us. Because we're not guaranteed forever, right? Life is life is could be certainly short. And I think it's important to prioritize things in life that are important. And that's family, right? So and you know, memories, you know, a lot of your childhood memories fade, but you know, my dad was one he tried, it was tough with six kids, but he always tried to be at our sporting events. And it's ingrained in my head. I think I was in grade school wrestling and I had my first pin. And I remember just pinning and looking up and just seeing the excitement in my dad. Yeah, in awesome. his hands. And like, it's ingrained. It's like, it's like, it's like that. It's like the, the, the move, the end of the movie with, with, uh, you know, karate kid, like that, it's just in my head. And, I, and that's such head. a great memory for me. Yeah. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Butch, I wanted to ask you, I mean, you own, you own two businesses, correct? So you well, have... I, I own the salon and I'm in the process of buying the rink. Okay, so I, run, I manage it. I, I run it like I'm here. Like, you know, I'm pretty much. I'm doing about 70, 75 hours a week. Oh, wow. Okay, so, yeah. So style T, uh, in Wilkesbury, and then Roller King. Skateaway. 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 Sorry. Roller King was the nice. one I was thinking back in the, when we were younger. Got um, it. Yeah, Skateaway and on Blackman Street. Skateaway. Uh, awesome. So yeah. So how do you how do you balance the demands of of well. Of, Work. Luckily now my, my kids are older and, and, you know, that's another thing that comes into this whole equation is your other half, like your relationship has to be in sync to, to, you know, portray that to the kids or to, to make the kids know that you guys are, you know, a team working together. So um, luckily now my wife, she works at my shop, the shop part-time. Um, so, you know, my kids are grown now. So they're out of the sporting events and doing all that thing. The, the skate away thing kind of happened. My mom, um, I worked here as a kid, my first job, 14 years old. I loved skating. I, I lived here and I, I, I got a job working in the skate room that I, I built myself up to DJ and floor guard, all that other fun stuff. And then all my other siblings worked here. We ran this place back in the nineties and late eighties, early nineties. And, um, we all left then we all moved on and a couple of, uh, managers notes has been the same owner since, since 1972. And a couple managers were hired and I guess bad things happened. Certain people got caught stealing and the owner reached out to me and he said, Hey, will someone in your family take the place over? And we all had careers. We all had you know, jobs, all, all of us. And uh, my mom was empty nesting and she loved the place. She's like, I'll do it. I'll do it. <laughs> my mom in 2010 took over, the, over the rink here and we had to bring it back because it was, these kids have no respect today. So I helped her you know, a little bit, but she, she, she brought it back, got the place, you know, successful again. And then and COVID hit in 2010 and she got scared because my dad wasn't the healthiest and she got worried. And both my kids were working here. My Both my kids started here at 14. So I said, you know what? I don't want to lose the place. I'll, I'll take it over. So I just started running it right, you know, right, probably 2019, right, right. Well, whatever COVID hit, right after COVID, I, I started running it. And uh, I came in and I just like revamped the whole place. I painted, I painted the outside, the inside. You know, I'm just trying to try to bring it back because I want it's it's such a good place for kids to have something somewhere to go because everything's dying. Like there's there's yeah. not really places like when we were kids, you had play you had options. There was places to go or you know meet your friends or do things or you could actually walk outside and feel safe and go places. Now you have to be driven everywhere pretty much, and 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 you know it's a good place for kids to come and still have fun. And everybody has a skating memory of 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 you know when they were young and they got to go and skate couples with a girl or something. You know. So I'm just trying to keep I mean, it, it was it was the place. Skateaway was the place. I mean, we we obviously when we were growing up, we went to the one that was in Taylor. Yeah, right. Same obviously. Owners, same owners. Same owners. Yeah. So I mean, that was like we lived there. I mean, we looked forward to that. Schools used to give us tickets to go to Skateaway. Like that yeah. was, yep. you know, you earned them to go there, but that's where we spent our weekends. And <clears throat> you know, it was cool to have those things. Like even uh we were just talking about Zach's periwinkles. It was a that that used to be up by Kmart. Like we used to spend time up there as well. So if you weren't up there, you know, which was the equivalent of Chuck E. Cheese at the time, but it was Zach Periwinkles. Right. Um, and then you either went to the movie theaters, you went when the Vimont Mall actually had a theater. Um, so you used to walk out of the mall and go right over to the theater. Um, or you'd go to Skateaway. And that was like, you know, what you did. But to, to, to know that that's still the foundation, because I've been to the one on Blackman Street yeah. a few times since then. Um, and it's like all your childhood memories come back. Yeah, and the fact in. that you can still bring that there is the amazing. Smells, the different things, you know. And <laughs> see, I'm lucky enough that, and the reason I did as well is because 
I could be with my family, you know, like it's right. a family business. So, you know, it's not like I'm away from them. My kids, they're always here. They all, they're, you know, whether they're, if they're not working, my son's here skating. So, and a lot, he has a lot of friends in the place. So, you know, that's the one good thing. And I also could spend time with my parents because they're still, they still help out here. So that made it a little easier to spend all this extra time there uh, as opposed to just being out or going out drinking or doing something else, you know, it's, and I'm, I'm slowly cutting back, you know, on the, the haircutting thing. Cause I've been doing that for 25 years and I uh, had my fun with that. Got to do all kinds of fun things, celebrity things and this and that. I had fun with it, but standing every day, all day long for eight, eight hours is just not fun. Yeah. And once, <laughs> not. I almost, uh, I almost went to do an apprenticeship at a barber shop, And then I think one of the things that was uh, a deterrent for me was, these guys stand on their feet all day long. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to be hunched over. <laughs> what they don't tell you, like I, like I, I wish again, and this is the things that I, I even with my daughter, when you'll see one day when they want to pick a career, you, you can kind of tell them the good, the bad, like, you know, I didn't really have that because like, I didn't know what I wanted to do in my life. And, and I went to school, you know, I, I always cut my friends in high school and ironically the, the, one of this a guy named Paul who was one of the figure skating teachers at skate away when I was a kid he said to me you're great at cutting hair why don't you go to school for it and I'm like yeah maybe I'll go to school maybe I'll do a barbershop he's like no you have to do women you have to do women's hair um but what, what they don't tell you is it's great and you, you you build you build you build but then at a certain point you just do this you flatline you can't make more money unless you work more or charge more you cannot make there, there's not enough hours in, in, in the week to to, to to do it so you know, you don't realize that. Plus you're stuck in one area. You can't just pick up and, you know, like, you know, like he said, uh, go, he gets to go to Philly one day or, you know, or work from home. I, I can't ever do that. I have to be on right. every day. They're talking, you know, you're physically using your hands so your hands get beat up. It's, it's just, I, I, especially with kids, like I always try to tell them the pros and the cons and what, okay, this is, this is a great job. This, this, this is what you want to do, but just think of these things. Yeah. But they don't. They know everything, though. So you can tell them yeah. whatever you want. <laughs> especially, especially the daughters. Yeah, especially yeah. The daughters. They, I agree with that. I mean, even even my my daughter now, she knows everything. Yep. Yeah. Do you guys yeah, find which one? Which ones? I know they're always different, but which ones do you find easier, the boys or the girls? The girl. Your girls easier? Way easier. My 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 little guy is like the little boy. Man, like he, he, Oh my God, he run. He's like b- bouncing off walls, runs laps around me. Like sometimes I'm like, bro, you gotta slow down. I don't even know what's happening right now. <laughs> How about you, Jeff? I mean, my my son's pretty. He's pretty tame. He's a good kid. He's he's pretty calm. Um, he's kind of got my demeanor, and and my wife were very like, not that you're a wild man, Adam, but like we're just very like, just very chill. Very, I think I think that kind of rubs off on him to an extent, and then. I mean, our daughter is, uh, she'll be 11 months and it's, so I don't have a, enough time to really kind I of, you know, but like I, I, I see her now and like, I, I know for a fact that she's going to be troubled just because like, if she doesn't get what she wants, like she'll sit there and she'll grunt. And I'm like, and our son was so easy to a, to a degree, um, where I'm just, I'm doomed for, for, you know, her. And I always say like, when we found out we were having a girl, of course I was, I was happy. Right. And I already had my boy. So I was like, whatever, it doesn't really matter. But like, I wanted a boy uh, again, um, just because like, I felt like I kind of knew what I was doing with that. Um, and we had all the toys and all the clothes for it, uh, already. But obviously I love the fact that we have, you know, one of each. And, um, my fear was like, I'm like, I hope she looks like me when she's older because then I won't have to worry about the boys. Um, but that would feel bad because she looked like me. But I'm fearful that she'll look like my wife, and who's just gorgeous. And um, I'm going to have to possibly murder someone or have my son do it. I don't know. Yeah. So. Just call me up. I'll, I'll do some dance battles for him. They'll, they'll run away, John. They'll right, be like, right. hey, who's this, who's this guy? Be like, hey, guys, what's up? Crazy uncle. I've done that before plenty of times. <laughs> <laughs> what do you guys um you know we grew up in a time where we didn't have social media what are your thoughts and and you know butch i mean you have you know teenagers and, and, and older teens who grew up with the internet i mean 
Um, what challenges did you, if, if any, did you kind of have to go through? And then Adam will get to you and I kind of want to see like what your yeah. thoughts are kind of heading into that, that world. Well, you know, I was, you know, you'll, you'll see, cause now with Snapchat and all these things, like I didn't let them have social media early. You know, I, my son actually just got Facebook last, last night. Like, not that I, I told him he couldn't have it, but he, he just didn't care. You know, he, he, he didn't even care to have it. Um, but you have to look at their devices. You have to be on it. Cause my, my, my son one time, a couple of times now, I'm twice. I, uh, he, he went on, um, with Fortnite and he bought all these, cause you know, you link, you, you're going to link all your, you, you, I don't know if you did that yet, but you have like these Apple IDs or something, and you, all of our stuff is linked. So I could find their phones if they're lost and you have all these things linked together. Right. And at first I, you know, they didn't never did anything. So I trusted them, to, but I always looked at their stuff, but my son just started buying all these, like he spent like a thousand dollars on Fortnite, And I'm like, what the fuck? Did, are you kidding me? Luckily I can reverse <laughs> everything. And then I've had to put, he has to ask for permission to play things, um, which you, you live and learn with that, with that shit. But uh, you have to be able to look at their phones, like always, especially with like predators and having sons and daughters, you have, have to look at their stuff you have to look at their messaging because you just don't know who could be looking out or, or messaging them so and, and who knows for you guys because it's only gonna get worse in the future yeah oh, it's, it's it's shitty the way it is now but you you have to and I, I do like 360 with with their phones um that's like an app where you can not that i want to track them but like i pay for the one with my daughter when she first started driving it tells you how fast they were going <laughs> yeah. no you're, you're on it like <laughs> you don't want to feel like you're you're falling around but you know, you just, you just have to know that they're being safe. And, and especially with like, I don't like Snapchat cause that shit, you know, how it goes away and they're addicted to that shit. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Adam, what do you think about, uh, you know, heading into that? Like, you know, there's studies done and I think I just read one the other day where, you know, kids who have, you know, social media and phones at an early age, you know, suffer from, whether it's depression or just self image uh, issues and, and things like that, they're just you know higher rate of that happening. Um, have you and your wife talked about like, you know, what your plans are to introduce that to them or try and keep it away for a certain amount of time? Oh, uh, for sure. I mean, we, I mean, my daughter has friends that like legitimately have like iPhones already, which is just crazy to even, think about right like so she doesn't and she won't um they have tablets yeah but right. those tablets are like they're amazon fire tablets which have like kid appropriate games on them that we can put ratings on we have it they turn on at a certain time and they shut off at a certain time so they're not being down the rabbit hole being on a tablet all day like it's the summer they're going to play outside they go to camp like they're going to be doing all these activities this summer right like getting them out and doing the things that we did as kids whether that's riding their bikes whatever it may be right not stuck on an ipad um my wife has set up for the kids so like i don't have as you know i gave up social media i i gave up facebook years ago and then i recently gave up like instagram I guess I kind of wanted to set an example for my own kids that it's okay not to be attached to your phone 24 seven, right? Cause you know, as someone who's in the, in, in, in the professional world, you you're on your phone from time to time talking to clients or whatever it may be during your work hours, right? Like that's natural. But I also didn't want to be that guy minus checking like the MLB scores at night or something or like the game scores or something. But I didn't want to be that guy who was like sucked down like the path of like being attached to my phone. So I was like, I'm going to give up social media. I'm going to set a good example of like, this is to be off my own device. So all my attention's on my kids all the time. Um, but they have the little Facebook messenger app for the kids, but they can only, it's a parent approved. So like the parents have to approve the classmates that they're talking to. So like, my son has like two friends from school that he can talk to. And my daughter has like three of her friends from school she can talk to, but the parents have to approve it on their end and we have to approve it on our end. Um, and then there's time limits on how long they can actually like talk. 
but that's like to the extent of what they have like thinking about like i i've i've heard some friends say like their their daughters have like a facebook and like an instagram and they're like 10 11 i'm like what like that's crazy like because it is so hard and butch i know you're shaking your head like it is so hard to monitor that like like you know what i mean like there there's only so many settings on social media that you could set and really put in place like there is no like kids facebook like there's youtube kids but like even youtube kids like when you look at youtube kids like there was things we had to disable even on the youtube side because mm -hmm. there's a lot of things that fall through the loopholes yep. that are posted um we tried the we tried the roblox thing for like because some of their friends had roblox that lasted maybe 30 days after some of the games that i saw that were on there and i'm like guys like what is like this is there's user created boards where they can do pretty much create whatever they want and some of the content that's on there was was it good so i'm like all right no no roblox that's gone uh so listen i think as butch is kind of already there like he was just saying like his son just got facebook but on his own like decided to get it on his own i think I think you definitely have to be like very vigilant of like what your kids are on, what they're looking at, what they're seeing, who they're talking to. Because like when we were growing up, I had 288 dial up and I had something called AOL that just came out. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I had a buddy list of probably like eight people that I talked to <laughs> and the Internet moved so slow, minus being fascinated by the Blair Witch's website when Blair Witch first came out because I thought it was real. That is like the only site I think I went to by just logging in and talk to friends on Insta Messenger. But like how we went from that to what we have today, like my my mind is like blown, like because I don't even know what the future holds. But all I know is what I can control today. And I could tell you, like I tell my daughter all the time, like she's always like, well, when you trade in your phone, can I keep your old phone? I'm like, no, like you're not getting a phone yet. If anything, we're going to buy you what we had when we were kids, which was like a track phone that you put minutes on it. And it's used to call us. And if there's an emergency, like that's yeah. it. You know what I mean? Um, we got a quarter when we were kids. They're like, use the pay phone or a dime. Like, you know, I remember there used to be outside of skateaway. There used to be the pay phone outside of skateaway. You called your parents when it was time to, you know, time to be picked up or go home. And then you went back inside. Like, so what the kids have today, like you really just got to, you know, you just really got to, you got to stick to that because, you know, you always have like, well, oh, it's okay. We, we let our kids have it. It's, it's fine. Well, Hey, listen, every parent is different on how you parent. And I can tell you like, this is the way that we do things because you just don't know these days. There's like weird people out there, predators, everything else. And like, you don't know who your kids are talking to and you don't know if it's, you know, especially like on Facebook, I would imagine in, in Instagram when you're on the messengers, like it could be somebody saying I'm this person and it's really not them. You don't know. I mean, so you got to really be vigilant. So that's kind of my thoughts on it is like, I don't, our kids just, they they stick to an Amazon fire tablet for their age. They have their kid appropriate games they play and I have their internet turn on and turn off at a certain time. So they don't have all that screen time and they actually get out and do like real life things like with real life friends, like at parks and ride bikes and and do hikes with us and all the fun stuff that we did as kids. So they're not stuck to a tablet all day. So Facebook now is basically, John, you'll know, as, as when you have a business, it's kind of just a business tool. That's the way I use it it's now. I, use, I, you know, for advertising for the rink and more so for the ring, I don't even really use it. I used to back in the day when I was trying to build, you know, you, you can use it for hair for posting things, but I, I'm just done with that. But now we use it basically for, for, you know, the, the rink, but also the one cool thing about it is, is it's like a, it's like a scrapbook of your, of your family. You know, that's the one thing I like about it is memories will pop up of, of from 10 years ago with your, your kids that you forgot about that. Yeah. That's the only one thing I do like about it. But um, the, the kids now are kind of like, Facebook's for old people. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's, that's the, you know, it's, it's the MySpace of today. Yeah. yeah, that's the old people app. Uh, and so, I'm like, you know, my, I think now it's basically the, mostly Snapchat, Snapchat and TikTok that are the two two ones that the kids use the most. Um, but even that, my wife actually gets paid from TikTok. That's just from, awesome. From skate videos. Oh, nice. Yeah, she started making skate videos and just posting them on TikTok. And you know, she had a couple of them to hit three million, two million, and she got a couple really big ones. And and she doesn't make a lot, a couple bucks here, a couple bucks there. But yeah. but uh, 
Yeah, it's it's a cool way. Again, it was, you know, she films all the, the customers and the family, and we'll see nice like, little girls come in that look real cute skating with their mom, and and she'll like, can I can I film you guys and put you on TikTok? Um, so like the, the apps could be used for good. Yeah. It's just too many people use them for bad. For bad, know? yeah. And that's yeah. my my biggest fear is like, you know, us staying up. Well, me, I, I I'm like half stupid. I feel like when when it comes to technology, like, and I feel like I'm. I'm scared about having to try and learn all these things before my kids do it because they can outsmart me. <laughs> I'm not on top of it. Um, Cause you're right. It's a scary world. It really is. It is. It, you know, now you, did you see that new Apple vision thing that's coming out? Yeah. Uh, you know, it's crazy. You said that I watched that whole like 10 minute video that they posted. And my wife was like, she's like, this is, this is insane. Like, who's going to go and, and buy this? I'm like, listen, this is what it's oh, going to be. Okay. Let's sell it the first day. We're all going to be like, yeah. Wally. you ever see the movie Wally? We're, we're yes. In, our chairs. in the chairs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's what our soda pops. It's crazy. It's- <laughs> but I think that's just going to encourage um, isolation. Yeah. You know, it it's is. just, it's 100%. It already does what the kids now with the gaming, like, it already does. They just want to sit in there. Now they still talk to each other. Like, my, my son plays video games all the time um and talks with his friends on there and you know it's it's right but but they do a lot of these kids just don't want to leave the house they don't want to they want to just sit and play in the room play games and and they're going to have not only vision effects but like their their posture all these problems they're going to have with their phones in the future these kids so that's why you know i I feel for you guys having younger ones because it's it's a scary world it's a scary future like what is what's coming you know that that's that's a scary thought well you know it's funny you say that is that i think the scary part about it all is that like papa you and i are around the same age so you know the era that we grew up in right so you know a lot of people talk about the gen zers now now i think it's like gen alpha is like the latest one now it goes up to like 20 something i think is what they i forget what the year range is but like not even so much like i think we were raised at a time where we're taking what we were taught as children and we're taking that. We're also kind of what our parents taught us. We're putting on our children. Now I think about like, as my kids are being raised by my wife and I, and we're kind of trying to put on them what we were taught as younger, like as they get older, I'm hoping that they take what we're teaching them to teach their kids to still be able to go out and enjoy real life and go on hikes and enjoy stuff rather than, you know, the stuff that's out there today, where versus like, maybe some of these other kids that are growing up now and and their kids, like maybe they have a different kind of view on it because we kind of experience like being kids playing in the dirt, playing with our transformers, doing those things. And I'm like, even I'm so happy that my, my son is like huge into transformers. Cause like we were when we were kids and like the new movies coming out and he just bought all these new little transformer toys and like, you know, he loves Star Wars and he likes all this stuff. Like a lot of these people, like I heard somebody talking the other day and like the one person didn't even know what Star Wars was. And I'm like, how do you not know what like Star Wars is? It's like, it's all over again. Like, you know, like it, it kind of, there's like our cycle where things keep going through a cycle. Um, but like seeing the new Apple product, which like you brought it up, like Wally's a perfect reference to that because it really is like that. Like my wife's like, okay, who's going to be sitting in the living room? even though they can look at people in real real time, but then also have this virtual kind of world around them. Like who's going to sit there with these goggles on their head and like have a conversation. I'm like, believe it or not, there'll be people out there that actually do oh, that. That, that will sell out day one. And that's going to be their only thing that they do and they don't know how to unhook. Right. So like, I think for us, I think for Popco and I, yeah, I think we definitely have our challenges because we don't know how much more technology can go and what's going to be brought and what's going to be out there for the kids at that time but i think it's more concerning for like if my kids have kids like what that's going to look like because i'm hoping they kind of take the lessons that like were passed on to us and then we pass on to them versus like other people who are just like meh like you know the people like who don't go to skate away anymore who don't go and ride a skateboard or ride bikes. Like I drove by the basketball hoops the other day and there's one, one single kid playing basketball out there. I'm like, when we were kids, we lived at this park. We were shooting hoops all the time. Now it's like, you know, everyone's stuck behind a, 
in the Wally setting. If that's a great reference to use. So, did you ever see? Was it? I think was it Grown Ups Two, where uh, Adam Sandler, his kids, like they, they don't want to disconnect, and he takes them camping. Yes. Yeah. I tell you guys, like, so yeah. when my kids were little, we got we we became friends with a group of of of, of actually their their uh, classmates' parents, and they had a camper. So I actually. I, I bought a camper and we all started camping together and we'd go to these different campgrounds. And that was the one thing that my kids still loved because they got to play like we did. Like when we were kids, we could walk to our neighbor's house. We could go down the street and yeah. do that. I can't do that now. Well, when we were camping and remember like when the street lights came on or it got dark, you had to come home. Mm -hmm. so we, we started camping and we'd camp with this group and there all these, all these kids would stay together and they'd got to do that. They got to go play and just, like you said, get dirty and, you know, go look for, look, look for frogs in, in the water. Let's do things like that. And then, you know, when it got dark, they'd come back and, and, you know, I, I, I it was the best thing we did for our kids was buy that camper and just start camping because we went all over the East coast pretty much. And, and my kids are 19 and 17 and I, and I got rid of my camper now, but they said, we, we want to go again. We, they loved it so much. And it's another thing. I'll probably get another one when my daughter has kids and start taking them again, because, it, it just the kids got to play and like and disconnect like i said like the grown-ups too were as kids they didn't know they were from new york they didn't know how to just and then they started having fun being kids again yeah yeah, well, yeah adam like you and i like we we had a life where half of our life we had no internet and half of our life had internet but we we kind of by the time internet came we were like old enough to understand both sides of it and even like reality yeah. tv like that you see on on tv now it's like when that started to hit big, like I knew that it wasn't real. Like I knew it was, it was already set up and fake. Like kids now are seeing the shit. They think like the Kim Kardashian and all that shit, like that's real life. And they need to have like X, Y, and Z. Like sure. yeah. it's, it's like normal life for them. It's, it's crazy. They don't, they don't, they don't know the difference. I, th I think the other thing too, is like, you just have to, like, I love talking to the kids about like, the things we did when we were growing up. Cause like, they like to ask those questions. Like, you know, sometimes my daughter will be like, what were some of the things you like to do when you were like a kid? I'm like, similar to what you guys do now, like play outside, um, play hide and go seek. Like, I know we would, we would do camping. We would go up the lake. We would go fishing. Like we just took our kids fishing. Um, we'll be going back off fishing again, but we took them fishing last year and like they had a blast. It was the first time we got their license for them. We took them out fishing um and they had a blast even though it was a tough day catching anything we still had a blast going out and doing that right and like just giving them those experiences like that we have like in in popco i agree with you i think we had i think what was nice about our time frame growing up is that we got to experience all that was great of the 80s and early 90s during that time but then we also got the experience of like you know having the internet but like the internet at the time was like it wasn't what it is today no. so you were very limited to what you could do anyway like yeah you could talk to your friends like as if you're texting them like you would on your phone today um or you could spend time hoping that your mom didn't pick up the phone while you were downloading an album off an appster and then you got mad at her because you lost your connection to some guy named kenny from connecticut and you were trying to get the pearl jam album right like that was different right things were different then but yeah like, I think that was probably the, the the coolest thing at the time. Outside of that, you're like, oh, this is kind of boring. I let's sit anyway. And you still went out and did things. Now, everything is like right at everybody's fingertips. Like, you know, my daughter asked me something the other day. I'm like, how'd you know that? She's like, oh, she's like, my friends were talking about it. They saw it. It was like in one of the little things on like the, the Google thing her mom was looking at. I'm like, it's just amazing to me that they you can get just how fast things come to you today. So it, it draws people in more because they have access to it. But I think if you just kind of teach your kids to there's more to life than just what you have here and you can kind of pass down what was passed down to you, like, you know, it's, it's a, you can still have them live that life and still be able to have a little fun on a tablet as well if they want. Right. So. Yeah. Well, I feel like we could talk about like all night, literally, and I don't want to keep you guys too much longer. It's you know getting late on a, a Thursday night, but um, you know, how how important do you think? Or not, I mean, it obviously, is, but like, 
we're all married and our wives are a huge part of our lives and who we are as people and who you know our kids are. How important are they to you? Our wives? Yeah. Like, um, I'm telling you, it, it, and you'll see, you'll go through ups and downs. I've been, we just had our 20th anniversary this year. Together 23 years at our 20th anniversary. And uh, there's always, with the kids and life, and it's ups and downs and ups and downs. And the best thing we ever did was we went, we went to counseling to try to, you know, cause just to try to make sure that we were the best we could be for the kids. And, and it's the best thing we ever did, you know, cause so many people, and so, especially, you know, guys, they think, well, I'll do the outside work. You do the inside work or that you have to really be supportive of your wife. You have to be 50, 50, you have to help her because housework sucks and it does. And, and, and it, you have to do your part. You can't, if she's working all day and then comes home and has to do all the housework and wants to cook for you and you're going to be button heads, you're going to be fighting, you know, you, you want to support her because if you, if your kids see a healthy relationship with the two of you, right, they're, they're going to see, and that's what they're going to want. How many, how many girls you see that have daddy issues? Why do you think mm -hmm. they have dad issues? You know what I mean? Cause right. or they see their, their dad being verbally abusive to their mother or their, they see that. So they see you guys butting heads or fighting over something that, that, you know, can be avoided. And that's what I could even give you guys like advice. Cause I've been married a little longer and, and, you know, by far early on in the relationship, I would like, I'm not going to see no therapy. What do they know? Like, you like, but for the first five years, the first 10 years, like, yeah, right. Nobody's going to tell me because you think you know it all, but right. as it goes on, you, you learn, like you, you grow together and you want when the kids are, you successfully raise them and they're grown and moving on you want to have a solid, still a solid relationship. I, I, I've heard, you know, like I said, cause I do a lot of women's hair and I, I, a lot of people are like, Oh, the minute the kids are gone, we're done. We're just, we're just staying together for the, to, to do that. And, and you don't want that because the kids feel that they, they, they see that. you want to have that strong bond to, for the, with the two of you. So they know that and they, they feel that. And, and, and I think it's only going to help them in their relationship in the future. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think, I mean, I think you're spot on. I mean, you know, I've been, we've been together, geez, coming on 18 years together and then 11 married. Um, so we, we dated young and then here we are fast forward, uh, 11, 11 years later, married and 18 together. And I would say, yeah, I mean, listen, I, I would be, I am nothing without my wife. She is, she is the best. I mean, she does everything. I mean, she, I think we have a good, we have a good chemistry when it comes to, I love to clean. She likes to clean. So I'm, I'm a clean freak. So like, I'm always like, I'll do the upstairs. She'd like, I'll tackle the downstairs. You know, I'll do all the financial things that we need to do financially. But like, when it comes to like cooking, like first and foremost, like I can fry up like a, uh, maybe a grilled cheese and, <laughs> and an egg, right? Like I'm pretty good at grilled cheeses. That's probably the other kind of thing I'm at. Like she is like the meals, remembers everything. It's like, you know, you know, the my daughter needs this, my son needs that, this is that. Like she's got like she prioritizes all this stuff where I kind of lack in that department. But I think there's like some areas where are my strong point, maybe not her strong point, and then my low point, but maybe her strong. So like it kind of it kind of all works out. But I think it's just, I think it's also just reminding your significant other that they're important as well and that you're thankful for what they do because um, I, I, I wouldn't be able to do it with, without, without her. And I think that makes you stronger. And, and I think the other thing too is, you know, we both came from, you know, divorced families. So for us, you know, we always had said that it's, you know, for us, we're, we're going to be always together no matter what, because number one, I want my children to grow up and appreciate the fact that their parents are together, but appreciate the fact that their parents are really in love with each other and that they, you know, it's not just like, Oh, like you said, like, let's we're only together until the kids get older and we peace out. No, like we, we made a commitment, we made a bond. And when we have any type of argument or we butt heads, cause it happens in every relationship, we talk about it. Um, you know, my wife is a therapist, like she can't give me, she can't give me, I mean, I think I get therapy from her, even though <laughs> I don't sure. realize it's like, it's like subliminal. I'm like, 
wait, did she just give me therapy? Yeah. Wow, I feel better. Maybe, I don't know. But um, but I think like we have a good way of like, we can't go to bed mad at each other. Like we always have to talk about things or like we take the time to talk about it. And sometimes I'm a knucklehead. Like maybe I don't, I don't always like digest what she's putting down. And then I go, God, I'm such an idiot. I didn't digest that. And then I'll go back and be like, you know what? You were right. I was wrong. And I think it's okay to like admit when you're wrong and they're right. And she's good at when she knows she's wrong and I was right. But I think that's the most important thing. And I think it's, it's, uh, you know, I think it's great when we can do that because I, you know, for us, like we don't argue in front of the kids. Like we don't have any type of things like that with the kids. Like we're civil people where we can actually have a conversation and it's made our relationship stronger over the years. Um, you know, so I think um, I'm very thankful for everything I got for, for what I have. So. Yeah. They're definitely amazing. As, as crazy as they are. I will say that out loud. Yeah. I mean, we are, we are too, but I mean, like, yeah, I'd be, I'd probably be dead in a gutter somewhere. <laughs> and I mean, as yeah. far as the kids go, I mean, yeah, I mean, and they kind of bust their balls, you know, there's a whole thing like a meme on uh, social media where, um, you know, if you go on vacation, the, the mom packs for all the kids and like the dad packs, like, you know, the, the shirt and a pair of pants for himself. And that's, <laughs> and that's the truth. I, I, it is you know, the truth. hundred percent. Not, not for not in my case. No, I'm, you do it all. I'm opposite. You do it all. I, my wife's like the guy. It's, it's so funny. Yeah, she, I, 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 we make a joke about it. I'm like, she just has to put her ass in the passenger seat. That's funny, dude. That's, I remember we were we just got back from vacation, but we're we're like driving down the road on on the uh, turnpike. And I'm like, oh man, we forgot uh, X Y Z. She's like, no, we didn't. I got it. And I'm like, yeah. oh shit, we forgot. Yeah. Like, no, nah, I got it. Don't worry about it. And it's like, you know, me saying that, you know, two hours down the road is is not going to help be helpful at all. But she's always got it taken care of. And yeah, they have that issue, and, though. balances like that's if if you're if you're like you, exactly like you said, I don't know, if, if, if you're a little lower here, she's a little higher here. It balances each other out. Balances out. I mean, and she'll she'll call me out when I'm wrong and I, I'll accept it. I'm like, listen, you're a hundred. I'm not even going to battle you because you're a hundred percent right. Like there will be times like like we're we're getting ready to go on vacation as well. And uh, I remember when I, I was like packing my suitcase this week, I'm like, well, I think I got everything unpacked up. She's like, well, you still have your kids. I still like, we still have this. We still have that. I'm like, God, am I being selfish right now? and saying that I just packed my suitcase and I didn't think about anything else except for myself. You're right. Let me, let me rewind. So I like come out of the room like this and I come back in, let me try that again. Like, it's like, <laughs> So do we have everything? Let me get the checklist here because uh, I'm I'm done, but I know everybody else is done. So let me try, you know, and it's like the little things you could do to, to make things better and, and put light to the situation. Then, you know, so it's, it's, you know, it's a good balance. It, it is. It's tough. Life's life's relationships in general are hard, but uh, yeah. it's, it's good. You got to just work towards them. I feel like too many people give up in life anymore and they don't work towards it. And I think it's that's easy. It's easy. The biggest to thing. It is. I mean, you hit the nail on the head. It's easy to give up and it's it's easy to, but again, you have to think about those two little ones that are looking at you and thinking like, if you give up, then maybe when they get older, they'll be like, Oh, I'm giving up. Like you yeah. have, they watch that stuff. You, you know, you, and like, it's different if it's a bad situation. I'm not saying that, but sure. for, for the most part, you know, as long as you're two level-headed people that want to work towards the same goal, um, it shouldn't be hard to communicate. It's, it's all about communication. That's what communication. it is. Absolutely. Communication. Absolutely. That's, That's it. Key. That's Everything. It is. Everything. It's, it's hard though, too. It's hard. It is, it is for sure. But mm -hmm. like I said, it, it, it gets easier and, and you grow together and you learn together and you, you know, you go through these stages of, of good times and hard times and the kids, this and the kids that, and you know, you just muddle through everything and try to do the best you can. That's all you can do is try to be the best you can for your kids, for your wife, for everything, for your job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. What What do you think about people who don't want kids? That's a, it's like a hot topic. Like, you know, we're assholes because uh, we have kids and we think everyone should have kids or whatever it might be. But like, well, I, in my opinion is if, listen, if you don't want kids, you're probably not going to be a good parent. Yeah. You know I mean, but then there's people that, like for instance, you know Brandon Rice. Yeah, yeah. So, I, Brandon he started at my shop young. Never wanted kids. Never. I'm like Brandon, you're young. You're you think that now. You think you don't want kids. 
And he kept saying, I'm never having kids, I'm never having kids. Now he's like, oh my God, I love having kids. I love having a kid. Like it's, <laughs> it's so, so it, yeah. but there's certain people that just aren't made that way. They're and not that they're selfish. Hey, if you want to enjoy your life and, and you go out and drink and travel and do all that stuff, go ahead. But me personally, I remember the first time my wife and I, we got married and we went to the beach the first time as a married couple and we're sitting there and I'm like, looking around at all the people playing with their kids. And I'm like, this would be so much more fun if we had kids. It, it, we're just sitting here. Like, I, I mean, I guess to me, not that, like I said, I don't think they're selfish, but they don't want to give themselves to someone else. Yeah. And, and if yeah. you, like Adam said, when you bring that home and you have to take care of that, you're responsible for that thing. They, they don't want that. And that's okay. You know, that's, that's on them. I always said, yeah. Look, you know. yeah, I always said, I want to, I just, just for a day, I want to have them feel like what we feel and not to change their mind or persuade them for, for anything. Like if, if they had that moment that day and that's all I want, it would be fine. But like, I want them to feel what it feels like to have that connection and that love and that you know i don't know what, what to call it sometimes just like just the happiness that the you know that fulfillment yeah. um so well, much like, just for a day i think you said it. i think that's i think Papago. i think that's exactly i think it's exactly right i feel like what i think what people will get out of that is i mean i've got some friends that that don't have kids and have talked about it but you know, having, it's not like something that's in the cards or like maybe they might not ever have kids, but just to give them that experience. I mean, what I love about when I come home from work or like the kids come home from school is like your kids never judge you. Like you can look like a piece of crap when you come out of waking up in the morning and they think you're the best looking thing in the world where you're kind of judging yourself. You're like, man, I look like shit today. But your kids are like, Dad, you look awesome, right? Like really? I, they dude, never judge you. Your kids must be amazing because I <laughs> they, my my son my son's called me uh <laughs> not fat, but <laughs> they love you for who you are. But like, you know, it's like even when I when I got home today, you know, my son's running, Dad, we missed you. And then my my daughter's run over, look, mommy and I got our nails done, Dad. I couldn't wait to show you my nails. Like it's like you're important when you come in and then the dog runs over and my dog's like scratching at my leg. I'm like, look, even my dog loves me today. But like, it's the, it's, I think it's like that feeling of like, they, they just care for you so much and they don't care about anything else except for that. You're their dad and they think the world of you and you're like their superhero and you can do everything. And it, it's such a cool feeling. And I think if you can, even if somebody was like, well, I don't think I'll ever have kids like, Hey, here's this, here's the feeling I'm going to give you, let me take off my invisible dad vest and give it to you for like a little bit to see what you think, test it out. If you like it, I bet you it changes your world, right? Like it seriously does. Because I remember like in high school, remember they used to give you like those like fake babies. You had to put like a key in and like, you had to like take care of the baby. Did you ever have that in high school? Oh. We had that in high school. Okay. They sent you home with like a fake baby and you had to like put a key in it and you had a baby like feed it. And okay. and like that experience, like thinking back to that, it's like does not prepare you at all for, for what really comes. Like this is a baby you put a key in and you, you could turn it on and turn it off when you don't want to. Like you can't just put a key in your baby today and be like, okay, I'm going to shut you up. <laughs> but like, I think if you give them like the invisible dad vest and say, hey, be, try this for a little bit, I guarantee you they're like, this is the greatest thing in the world. And Butch, I think you said it like, I think you were talking about just that, that joy, that experience of that. And like, you know, when, when the baby first comes out, like we were talking in the beginning of the conversation, like it's, there's a feeling that you can't describe to people. Like I try to tell people who are becoming first time parents. I'm like, I, I can't even describe the feeling to you. You just got to kind of feel for your own because everybody's experience is different. But like, when I think of it, it's like, it's so overwhelming with, with good memories and emotion. Like it's what gives you the baby fever to say, maybe I'll have a third, maybe I'll have a fourth. And you're like, okay, wait, it's not keep it with two. But then you're like, maybe I will have a third. I don't know. It's like that feeling. You're like, it's such a great feeling as a father. You, you just, it just overjoys you uh, for any parents, mother or father. It's just the greatest feeling. It makes yeah. you wonder though, like on the other end of it, how someone has that and could feel that and walks away from it. Like that, I know. Blows my I, we talk. We talk about that all the time. It's crazy. That's Sad. what I was saying about you know with with 
you know, people not wanting them, you know, some people have them and they just walk away from them. I, I'll never understand. I don't understand that. Yeah. I'm with you on that. I, I don't, I don't understand it. Heartbreaking. Yeah, it, it, it is. It's heartbreaking. And, and, but I feel like they're the kids that grow up that do the same thing. Oh, it's a vicious yeah. cycle. I mean, that's what yeah, happens. It, that's it, the it problem. Is. It is. Mm-hmm. And it, it's, it's funny too how the people who are shit parents, it's so easy for them to have children when there are people who want kids so bad who, you know, struggle. Um, there's a friend of mine who they lost a, a premature baby. I forget. It, it, maybe they were alive for a couple days and um, she is doing um, like a foster situation. And the baby that she got was actually eight months old, but had the body of a, a three or four month old because it was malnutrition net mal nourished um mm-hmm. just yeah. you know all this kind of different like shit and it's like how could you do that to this this baby like it's heartbreaking i, I want to cry talking about it it's just like there's people who want this so bad and can't have it but there's people and this is i think this is the the, the woman's fourth or third child like you're you're not feeding your child and the other kids are hungry too. Like that's like the how could you let a kid go hungry? Like that's yeah. It's it's, it's, it's like seeing this stuff on the news. Like when we like when we watch in like the news and stuff, and I see these things on the news with like these parents, like you know the, the stories. I mean, you guys probably heard the stories before of like people that are leave their kids in like a trash bag or like just you know dumped it. Like it's like what in the world like possesses you to do like that's you're just an evil person like that is just beyond like and it makes me sad and and as a I think as a father I've just like even for me like I remember when I used to go on work trips like I would have to go to Orlando or I'd have to go to like Vegas or I'd have to go here like everyone's like oh you know you're going to these places it's so cool and and, like the first thing I think about when I get on that plane is my kids Mm -hmm. like what if something happened while I'm up here god forbid I don't go back to them. I always think about the worst case scenario when I'm not around my kids because it really like, I think that's the other thing. Like I, it, that always used to freak me out. And that's why I kind of, I, I had recently changed roles within my company is that it's got kind of like traveling all the time. And then I was like, well, what happens if something happens and I don't get to see my kids again? And it used to bother me tremendously. Um, so now that I'm back where I'm in control, <laughs> making my own schedule and doing what I'm doing, I feel so much better. Cause I'm like, you know, my kids would be like, oh, dad, dad doesn't have to go anywhere. He doesn't have to do this or he doesn't do that. And that makes me feel good because I'm like always around my kids. Like, I don't know. I think mean, I'm just like, like weird like that. But I used to, every time I used to travel, I used to always be like, I'd call my kids the minute I got off the plane, the minute I got on the plane. And everyone's like, well, uh, my, some of my coworkers would be like, what are, you, what, are you, what are you doing? I'm like, I got, sorry, I got to go FaceTime with my kids. They're like, you just saw them. I'm like, yeah, well, I'm not like you, bro. Like, I, I got to go FaceTime my, <laughs> my kids because like, I miss my daughter. I miss my son. Like, I got to go talk to them. So like, I don't know, it's, I'm just, they're wrapped around me and I'm wrapped around them for sure. It's like, the, the you know, but it's, it's, uh, it's just a great feeling. I, I don't know how any other words describe You guys that. traveled without them yet? Because that's even worse. <laughs> that's even worse. Uh, <laughs> yes. You know what? We, we did, we did, was it last year or the year before? And that was painful it is. Um, it because is. Um, it was just kind of like a little anniversary getaway. Um, so like we're now we're actually we're going on vacation this weekend and um, like for the majority they're always with us but when we did the anniversary trip that was like as soon as we got to like the room we like we were like all pumped excited you know we we had some champagne in the room and my wife is like we're sitting there like we're like turning the tv on I think we were still watching like live pd at the time that's how like old we are like oh let's watch live pd while we're on our anniversary trip and drink a glass of wine and we're like we miss the kids let's FaceTime with the kids like it's amazing like you just become like you go right back into like oh yeah like you're not that person anymore when you were like 25 and you're out having a good time you know when you're a parent it changes you're like kind of miss our kids like let's facetime them yeah. pour a glass of like and the kids are like mom dad what are you guys doing we're like we miss you we're like uh, dad's wearing his like new balances like on the bed because he's like old he's got the white and blue ones on and like we're watching live pd <laughs> it's uh, like you know we just went on our, our 20th anniversary we went on we went on a cruise for the first time and we had 
like we've gone on like smaller, like maybe two, three day trips without the kids, but you know, they're 19 and 17. That was our first time actually leaving. And uh, uh, we had family members like staying or helping them out and stuff like that. But day two on the cruise, my wife is like, I, I can't wait to come and see the kids. I can't get, I, I, she just, she started making a little calendar of the count the days on to get the hell home. Cause, and, and like our kids are older, but she just, she just misses, she just loves the kids. She, she doesn't want to be away from them. It's a real thing, man. That's like, I tell people all the time, like, you know, I, you always hear people that, you know, always like, oh, I can't wait to get away for a couple of days, you know, and do this or do that. Like, I've got friends who are like, oh, we're going on our trip. Like, I'm like, oh, we miss the kids. Like, no, we won't miss the kids. I'm like, no way, dude. You always miss your kids. And you know why? It's funny. They, they come back to like, yeah, we, we missed our kids. Like, you, no matter how many you try to put that in your head as a parent, it doesn't work. Like, you always get to like day two, day three, and you're like, um, I'm curious to know what the kids are doing. Let's call them. Let's like, I miss them, you know? Yeah. So I, I think that's a, it's a special thing. It's a special bond. It's really hard to, to describe, especially if you're, if you're not a parent, I think it's hard to like really tell somebody that feeling. Cause you know, you always have that friend, like who's never going to get married. Who's never going to have kids. He's like, Hey man, you want to go to the bar? Like still at like 60. You're like, no, bro. Like, I, like we're, <laughs> I'm in tonight, <laughs> you know? Like crazy when they're the ones still that try to give you parenting advice. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they, know, yeah. they know how to raise kids, but they don't have any kids. <laughs> That's so funny. It's crazy. It's crazy. I mean, it's, it's, it's hard. I mean, for sure, but it's um, the best thing in the world. It is. 100%. Well, we'll wrap things up. Um, what's one thing you would uh, say to a future parent to um, get them ready for parenthood? But you go first. Okay. Uh, I would say uh, be patient um, and just enjoy it. Like, uh, enjoy every second the good the bad because like, you don't know what tomorrow is going to bring and like i said just remember that these kids are watching your every move every move and they, you, they take it all in and they are gonna be what you create and remember that remember everything you say everything you do reflects on those those little ones and even when you think they're not listening and they're not watching they're listening and watching mm -hmm. so always be aware of that and be conscious of that and if you do that and and you know i think you, you'll more people would create good little humans if they actually tried a little harder yeah yeah i i agree with everything you said butch i i, I think you said it perfect i mean <clears throat> patience is definitely you definitely have to have patience for sure um, we're all not experts when we first become parents. I could tell you, I, I didn't know shit. Like it was like, there's like a commercial that I saw recently that kind of sums it up. It was like the dad who had his first kid and he was like in the shower trying to get ready. And he's like trying to do this. And then he has a second son, but he's got this baby and he's like this time. And he's like, Tate, he's still swaddling the baby over here. Cause you become like <clears throat> so much more used to when you have the second kid. But no one's experts in parenting when you first become a parent. So definitely be patient for sure. Things are going to happen. You may do something different than somebody else does different. Like you got to just kind of roll with it and you got to just kind of trust your own instincts and your own gut that you guys are doing the right things. And um, it all works out. Um, <clears throat> the second thing I would say is definitely enjoy every second like we talked about before every second every minute every hour because it goes by super fast like i think sometimes we get caught up in this thing in life where i think we're we always think we're promised tomorrow or next week or the month after and popco i know you and i can relate to this but like this whole experience with Bob this past year really changed my whole perspective on, <clears throat> on life. And for anybody who didn't know Bob, his perspective was like, you didn't finish something at work. It's okay. It could wait till tomorrow because if your kids have a game or if you're something that <laughs> falls around your kids, 
it's way more important than anything you're going to be doing at work anyway, because that can wait. Like his perspective was always just, you know, live in the moment, live today. Um, <clears throat> and that really changed my whole perspective on just enjoying the time that we have because we're not guaranteed all the time. So like take the time, like, you know, you have a pressing thing coming up. Can you put it on hold? Because there's probably other things that are important, like going to your kid's recital, going and, and, you know, seeing your, your kid play baseball or whatever it is that you want to do, or schedule that vacation that you wanted to schedule and do things right. Like, I feel like time is, we're not guaranteed time. And I think sometimes we do think that we're guaranteed time, but we're not. Um, so definitely take every second minute and enjoy it because it goes by fast, but your kids are fully grown now. Popco and I are, are rolling through the, we're rolling through it, you know, yeah, I, little I decided, by little, but. I decided to start over again. I was, I was, uh, I had a kid who was self-sufficient, no diapers, you know, all that kind of stuff. If you need something from the fridge, you can get it. And uh, I started over. But one thing I want to say about Bob Foley, I think it's hilarious. Um, something he used to do. We had we used to work together in, in radio at Rock 107. Yep. And um, you know, Bob was Bob loved life, man. He was he was such a special person, and it's a shame what happened. And and you know his his family doesn't deserve it. And uh, but one thing we had a a boss who would we were required to be there from 8 30 to 5 30 those were the hours even as a salesperson you know we were 100 percent commissioned sales reps like all you know we, they, we, they shouldn't even care where we are like if we're hitting the numbers or whatever then leave us alone right but we had this boss that was 8 30 to 5 30 every day and bob what he would do is he would there was um an entrance to the floor from an elevator and there was also a back stairwell and bob would disappear down the back stairwell and it was just so we can go see his you know kids doing whatever they were doing um and it was amazing and i would laugh every time because you know our boss would go looking for for him to make sure like we're all at our seats until 5 30 like we're in school or something and uh or fully go and i'm like i don't know man <laughs> i don't know out of here yeah. <laughs> yeah it was awesome it was awesome i loved it you know and that's this kind of guy bob was he knew how important his his kids were. And, um, I think his son was not too, I forget when he found out that he was having his son. I don't, I don't know if it was a year after my son or around the same time. I forget. It could, yeah, but, it could have been close, close to around the same time. Uh, yeah. He was, he was pumped because he had a girl, a little girl first. And he was pumped about yeah. having a boy and, um, you know, his wife is beautiful. And, and it's just, again, it's a shame, um, that happened. That, that's what breaks my heart the most. I'm sad that he's gone, but just uh, his his family was robbed of a a yeah. great human being. But it happens 100%. a lot, you, you know. It's what you said, we're not we're not promised tomorrow, and you know that happens far too often. And it's it's uh, I can only pray that doesn't happen to me or any of us. Yeah, matter, yeah, know? absolutely. A friend of mine um, from Texas, he said this would change my perspective a little bit because you do sometimes you fall off, you do make mistakes, and you, you do you have to pull yourself back up, but he said his his father would always tell him someday we're going to go this we're going to go fish here someday we're going to go fish here someday we're going to go do this we're going to do this and that someday never came life got in the way he worked too much or this and that and he and he you know and then he passed away and they never did those things he always promised so he said don't have a someday life have a today life and do things and do the things you say don't don't just promise your kids you're going to do something do things with them and, and enjoy them and, and take them places. And so that's why I like, I do as much as I can. Uh, you know, yeah. I've always have it. Take them on vacations. We go here, we go there. We, I try to do as much as I can and, and, and give them those experiences, you know, because they're like you said, you're not promised. You're not promised anything. Yeah. Yeah. You see it so often. You see tragedy and you see, you know, with cancer, different things, you see all these different things happening. So you have to do, not necessarily leave a legacy, but you want, you want to be remembered as, as the good, you know, the, the, the superhero, like you said, for your kids. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. There's a good follow on Instagram. I know, uh, Adam, you said you got off it, but it's called anyone listening or watching. It's called the tired dad. Uh, it's a good follow. It kind of puts what we've been talking about into perspective as far as time and, you know, just watching your kids, you know, and I think he actually did something similar to what you just said, Butch about, um, 
oh, you know, we'll do it next year. Or, you know, we'll save it for the vacation for next year. Or we'll get there someday. And, you know, the, the daughter was three and then she, now she's like seven and the kids want nothing to do with them. And it's like, that's what happens too. Like, and they say like, you, only, you can only be Santa Claus for, you know, 12 times <laughs> or, um, you know, uh, Disney princesses till it really yeah, you know, it's all it's all stuff. certain amount of time until they don't want to, anything to do with you until you're, you embarrass them, you know, until they come back around like, you know, 10 years later, but it's a fun ride. Um, you know, thank for you for, sure. thank you for talking about, um, you know, your experiences and your journeys. And, um, I know we could, we could literally, I could talk about this all night. There's so much, I feel like we didn't touch on, but you know, we really can we, we don't have time for that. <laughs> All your listeners, well, just let your listeners know there, there's just a five part series. So we'll yeah, be back yeah. for five more parts. Yeah, we'll come back next year. We'll, we'll pick up <laughs> and talk about the, the year. We'll do a year in review. But uh, yeah, I'm sure Butch wants to get home out of the, out of the, <laughs> Absolutely. the rolling rig. <laughs> yeah, Butch, real quick. I mean, um, skate away on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, uh, all that kind of fun stuff. Skate away Wilkes on Facebook. Yep. Yeah. Blackman Street, Wilkes Bear. Um, yeah. The Butch, goodbye. do we still light up the couples only all skate sign? Can you see it down there? Let me see if I can hold on. Because I mean that that's what really makes skate away special is that well, I never was out there too much for couples only, minus like myself and my invisible girlfriend. But I mean, <laughs> you know, outside of that, um what's up? Light up the uh couples. Oh boy, we're getting this is a special behind. request. I feel behind the right scenes, now. yeah. Where do you see this? Can you see it down there? Hold on. Now I see it, and it still glows the same color. Yeah, red. All skates. I love in. that. I don't know. That's pretty. Pop, uh... Pop go. If we go to skate away, like. You and I will go out on the on the couple side. We'll just hold hands know. and skate. I don't know, Butch. That's pretty. Uh, that's it's called discrimination in 2023. I don't think that's appropriate. Couples. <laughs> well, no. I mean, like you can't you, you can't just let them go and not everybody else. This is, how dare you? No, I. I, <laughs> I, I the other sides of people like uh, when we have like we'll have men or ladies only. We don't say anything to anybody anymore. If you want to go out, go out. Whatever you want to do. Right. That's it. I do you still the, have the saucers? The saucers are still there, right? Like we could sit on the saucers. Yeah, the mushrooms. We still have those. Like the seats. Yeah. yeah. We still have the mushrooms. Like they're they're dinosaurs. They're they're like originals from like '72. So I'm not getting rid of those. That's awesome. I love the benches against the wall too. Those are the best. You need a break. Yeah. I remember this. When I was young. I was like I was in like it was daycare during the summertime. I would go um, during the summer, and this, the time it was I think it was Roller King and Kingston. Yeah. Is that okay? wire. Yep. yeah? So I would go there, and there was this girl I liked that was young, like I said. And um, there was this kid, his name was Chris Bath. Chris Bath, if you're watching, this kid was he, <laughs> he was an amazing skater backwards, whatever way. And he, I mean, all the girls were like in love with him. The one footer, good looking kid, skating backwards around the whole oh. thing. And I'm like, I'm a young kid, I'm like, I, I'm too afraid to even like attempt that. like I'll never forget that. And the girl that I liked, she was like in love with him. Did you uh, ever watch the Brett Ernst? It's he's a comedian. It's Brett Ernst. Look it up on YouTube. The roller skating. I'll have to check that out. He's describing what you're saying, right? Yeah. He's like, I'd go to the skating rink and I'd wear the peanut butter skates. And I'd be playing my game. And all of a sudden my song would come on and I go out there and I'm like, he's like, I'm on the floor like this. And all of a sudden, here comes fucking Tony. It, it, it just, it's on the screen. He's like, this, he's, doing his moves. he's going backwards. He's like, man, fuck Tony, I'm going to skate. You got to watch it. it I it's will. The exact story you just said. Right. Uh, I'll never Brett, forget it. It's like roller skating. You'll, you'll, you'll laugh your ass off. I forget the but, girl's name. I, I remember his name just because like, that's like burnt in my memory. And it turns make out a like, perfect, perfect movie script. Yeah. Oh, it's great. You'll tell you. <laughs> watch you'll laugh it turns out i think i went to school with his or his sister was like in at lehman like she was a year or two younger than me so i'm sure he was in school ahead of me too i forget um but yeah it's funny i want to say her name was wendy <laughs> i don't remember i can't remember but i remember his name very vividly chris bath you son of a bitch yeah chris he was her pan 
Yeah. <laughs> what are you watching? Yeah, fuck Tony. <laughs> I will. <laughs> And my, my computer is actually going to die, so we have to go now. All right, good. All right. But, guys, thank oh, you good. so much. I appreciate it. You guys are great dads, great husbands. Thank um, you. Thanks for taking the time. Thank happy you. Same to you, my man. Happy Father's Day to okay. you guys. And uh, hopefully yeah, happy we Happy Father's can, Day uh, to you guys. Thank you. Hopefully we can uh, reconnect soon. For sure. Thank Sounds you. Sounds good. All right. Later. Thanks, guys. Yep. Later, Butch.